Hello, peeps. Welcome back to the show. Welcome to Bold Talk by Joe Podcast. Hopefully, everybody's doing great. I had an episode on Gen Z, so now I'm going to have an episode on Millennials. That's right. We're going to have episodes on all these generations. That's what I plan to do because it is a big part of our society and culture, right? That's what this show is about. So today's episode is about millennials, who we are and what we care about and how we're changing the world. As a millennial myself, I am excited to explore the topic and share some insights with you. Who are millennials? Well, so first things first. Who exactly are millennials? Well, we're generally defined as people who were born between 1981 and 1996, which means we're currently in our mid-20s to mid-40s. Some people also call us the echo boomers or the digital generation since we grew up in the era of the internet and social media, which... It is true, but at the same time, when I was born, there wasn't any, there wasn't anything really that was social media and internet. We had to dial up, and uh, when I was in high school, right, and that was like a long time ago, and uh, there wasn't, uh, we didn't grow up with any of this stuff. I'm thinking this is more for the '90s kids that were born in the '90s, which uh, social media was a little bit was there was a little bit more of that, but not in the 80s and early 90s. There wasn't a whole lot of uh, how it is now, right? The there were, Yeah, there was Nintendo, and I mean, we had an Atari. So it was it was a little bit different in, in, in from, from 1981 to 1996. But of course, being a millennial is more than just a set of Earth years. We are direct, di- we're a diverse group with a wide range of experiences and perspectives. Some of us grew up in affluent families while others struggled with poverty. Some of us went to college while others started working right out of high school, which is so true. Some of us are married with kids while others are single and child free. What do millennials care about? Despite our diversity, there are some trends and values that many millennials share, for example, we tend to prioritize work-life balance, social social justice, and environmental sustainability. We're also more likely to be politically progressive, and we're less likely to be religious or to trust traditional institutions like banks and corporations. One interesting thing about millennials is that we're often criticized for being lazy or entitled. But the truth is, many of us are struggling to make ends meet in a world that is increasingly expensive and un- and unstable, right? We're dealing with things like student loan debt, stagnant wages, and housing market that's out of reach for many of us, especially now, right? Gas prices are through the roof. Houses are, you know, these houses that used to be worth Eighty thousand dollars ten, fifteen years ago. Now you're paying four to five hundred thousand dollars here in Arizona. Obviously, if you're from California, that is chump change. And uh, you sell your house over there. You come over here and you live like a king because everything is worth way more money over there. But you come here, you you have five hundred thousand dollars to spend, and you end up with like a nine bedroom house with acres. How are millennials changing the world, despite? These challenges, millennials are already making a big impact on the world. We're starting our own businesses, using social media to amplify our voices, which is what I do and what I what I might what I'm doing now, and pushing for more progressive policies. We're also leading the charge on issues like climate change and social justice, using our collective power, right, to demand change from those in power. Of course. There are still plenty of challenges ahead, and as we navigate the uncertain waters of the 21st century, we'll need to find new ways to connect with each other, build meaningful careers, 
and also create more just and sustainable world. But if there's one thing I know about millennials is that we are up to the task. And this explains, you know, how I am. You know, I am I am that kind of person. You know, I'm always up to the task. I care about social justice. Um, you know, climate change, I don't, I'm not really too deep into that kinds of stuff. Um, I do demand change from those in power. Absolutely. And this is one of the reasons why I have this podcast is because I want my voice to be heard. I want people to to hear me out. I want you to relate to me without, you know, me, I'm not a, I'm not a movie star. I'm not a, uh, prof, you know, I'm not a professional actor. I'm not an athlete. I'm just a regular person. And the point of this podcast was for me, a regular person to talk to you so you can hear me and maybe we can relate about some things because I am just, I'm trying to reach, I'm trying to reach people that think like me, right? Or that can at least listen to my podcast and go, okay, you know what? He might have a point. And there's a lot of struggles in this world. There is a lot of struggles. And yes, I've have heard millennials, you know, they're super lazy and oh, they're always on their phone. And but you know what? That's not just millennials and Gen Z and it's everywhere. We live in the era of technology. There is nothing you can do about it. Everything is done through the internet. Everything is done through your phone from reading the newspaper. Everything. When I was a kid, I used to read the newspaper, and uh, after my dad was done with it, right, of course, my dad had to read the newspaper first, and uh, then I would grab it, and I'm like, oh, man, what's, what's cool? And I would always go to, like, the sports section and stuff like that, and and that's how I got my news. I, I didn't even get a phone until 2002. I had a small little pager that I paid a dollar a month to get to get pages for my mother, ask, you know, call me to this number, right? And um, I would have to get on the public phone and call my mother. Hey, mom, I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing okay. What are you doing? What are you out there so late? Get back home. You know, and I wasn't a small kid at all, but, you know, that's all I had. I couldn't afford a phone until one day I ended up getting a better paying job and I ended up getting my first cell phone, which is a Nokia brick looking thing. And I paid about twenty dollars a month and it wasn't unlimited of course it was uh you can only make so many phone calls but text was unlimited which was really hard to text anybody with that damn thing and i don't even remember if you could text anybody with that thing it's been so long but it was uh it was it was different right i didn't uh i didn't grow up with uh, the technology that there is now these these kids now they they have full unlimited they have social media they have all that i didn't, they didn't even have a facebook or anything like that, or MySpace, or any of that stuff, until, man, it was 2008, or nine, or something like that. It was like a long time before I even got into social media. Most of my time, I spent listening to the radio, to a Coast to Coast show, and listening up, listening up on aliens, and, and doctors, and experiments, and that was my thing. That was listening to radio, listening to Howard Stern, and all that kinds of stuff. So, just because we are considered part of the of the of the era of technology we're really some of us are really not we ended up getting technology later on because yeah you know i moved out when i was 18 years of age and i wanted to start living on my own and and explore the world and it was a, it was a hard thing right especially when you don't have money to pay your your phone bill or anything like that and you have to cut it off all the time and you're month to month and you're trying to figure this out. It wasn't like it is now that where you, I could just shoot a text to my mom or anything like that. It was different. It was way completely different. And those phones were so outdated that you couldn't go on the phone and, and, and search anything. It was impossible, especially on that kind of phone where you could just type in the little words or, you know, it was, I mean, it was impossible. I think the first time I actually texted was I had an actual phone that was through T-Mobile 
that was called a sidekick. And this thing was like the greatest thing for me, right? Because it'll swing up and I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this. And, you know, you can text because they had a keypad and all kinds of cool stuff. And then the little ball will glow different colors if you got this hack on it or you got this thing from uh, eBay because there was no Amazon. So you buy this kit for it and you installed it and you did all this stuff and you can go into the settings and then you can switch the color ball, like the, the color of the ball and the ring, the ringtones and all this stuff. I don't know. I'm going a little bit way back, but that's the technology that I had. Like I said, I I didn't really grow up on computers. You know, in computer class, it was mainly we would play solitary in school and we didn't have Internet access. And when we were at the house, at my parents' house, we had an old desktop. It wasn't old. It was at the time it was like new. But I mean, to me now it's old. And this thing, you had to plug it into the wall and it would make this weird loud noise and like it was dialing, right? Because it was dial up. And uh, nothing worked. The only thing that I could use was like Yahoo Messenger. And you can go on to different group chats in there and talk to different people. And that was my internet because I couldn't I couldn't actually search for stuff because that thing will never work. And it wasn't even like we had unlimited service and nothing. I had to get magazines, right? I had to buy magazines for $5 to get this CD that would give you 30 free days of internet, right? Of, of, of connection, and uh, that's how I used to do it, right? So I would go to the store and buy the $5 magazine, and I would get that that disc out, that compact disc out, and I'll put it in the desktop in the tower, and that would give me 30 days of more internet, right, or more, more usage. And that's the way we used to do it until later on, years and years and years and years and years that we ended up with actual internet with high speed internet and all that kinds of stuff but i mean i was already you know i was already uh older so not till now not till recently about uh, i don't know i would say the last eight years i really got into social media and uh, into all this stuff right i didn't even i wasn't even in, in into youtube until i don't know maybe three four years ago so i was still behind right all i did was uh, think about work and making money and trying to figure out how am I going to make, how am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to make it? What am I going to do? What is next on my career? What am I going to, am I really following this career? Is this career right for me? Is, am I doing the right choices? Like all that stuff. That's what I was worried about. And not till recent that I'm like, oh man, YouTube is really pretty cool. I should have done this. I should have had a YouTube channel when YouTube came out, but when YouTube came out, I had nothing to make to do a YouTube. I knew nothing about any of this stuff. Podcasting and all this stuff is so new to me that uh, I'm learning as I go. I'm, I'm, I'm learning, you know, how to build a channel and how to promote myself and how to do all these things that I've never did in my life. But if you were to ask a Gen Z, they would have no problem making a channel. They would have no problem uh, making a podcast and figuring out how everything works and the microphones and this and the audio interfaces and all these things. And this to me was the unknown. I had no idea what I, what I was looking at, but I had to spend a lot of time on YouTube because I had no idea what was going on. I've been a mechanic my whole life and I am pretty good at it. And I didn't have YouTube. I had to use my process, the way I thought, the way I could diagnose things, the way I could figure things out, following manuals and all that. There wasn't a YouTube thing. Now, if you're a mechanic, now you have the power of YouTube where you can go on there and like, okay, this this car has a problem and you can even Google it and it'll tell you how to fix it. There wasn't any of that when I was when I was when I started my career. I had to think for myself, think outside the box and figure everything out. Trial and error, you know, trying to use my skills that I learned in tech school and, and apply all that to my life. So, you know, that's, that's a little bit about me, you know, that because I am a millennial, like very, uh, I am at, at that, in that, uh, in that era in the early millennial, right. In that era that, uh, that they consider from those years to, to from 81 to 86. And, uh, I mean, there's a big gap, right? There's a huge gap. My sister is, I believe from the nineties, and uh, she grew up more on the digital age than I did. And she was more she was more involved into making, you know, making a website, making a, a Facebook and all that stuff than than I was. It, it took me a very, very, very long time. But us millennials, we are good. 
we have really good values and, and we have impacted the world and we have to keep going, right? Because eventually we are going to be in our 60s and 70s if we if we make it, right? Then we're going to have the Gen Z take over and they're going to be next, right? When it comes to to politics and all this stuff. I mean, they're already involved in all this stuff, but as they get older and they get into their 30s and 40s and all that. So this is... Uh, this is how this is how it goes. This is how time changes. This is how the generations change over the decades, right? And it's very important that we all understand each generation. Hopefully you like this episode. Until next time. Peace.